All right, guys, welcome back. It's Eric here at Moss Pawn and Gun. Today, we've got another ammunition test we're going to be doing for you. I am really excited to see how this thing's going to roll along. We're going to be shooting 458 SOCOM, okay? 458 SOCOM is kind of like a 4570, but in a semi auto AR platform. So it feeds from standard AR mags. A lot of the components are interchangeable, everything like that. So it's a really interesting caliber. I've really had a lot of interest in it over the last few years. We're going to be working today with some Underwood ammunition. Now, Underwood is known for making high performance, high power factor uh, ammunition using premium projectiles. Okay, so guys, they only use the most top shelf components because they want the highest performance they can possibly get, both in power factor, velocity, energies transferred downrange, that's what they're going for is maximum power out of their ammo for the caliber that they're loading. Uh, we've got two different loadings we're going to be testing. We'll tell you a little bit more about them as we go, uh, but the first one is going to be called the Extreme Penetrator. It uses the Lehigh Extreme Penetrator projectile. Uh, we're going to punch these uh, ballistic shell blocks for you. We're going to put that name to the test. Uh, normally, I get to have all the fun here. I'm going to let Chad do some shooting for this video, and uh, he's going to He's going to get to play with this 458. So let's get to it. It's going to be fun. All right, guys, we're going to take a shot at the ballistic shell blocks with the extreme penetrator from Underwood here. But uh, first off, let me tell you a little bit about the rifle that we're going to be using. It's a 16 inch 458 SOCOM barrel on this Tromix. Upper here, Troy Rail, Sharps Bolt Carrier Group. We've got a Geisley two stage SSA trigger in here, running basic P mags, Vortex Razor 1 to 6 power on top, HD optic. We've got one of Ray's custom brakes on here that we make at Moss three chamber break, pretty dang effective on this 458. But enough talking, let's uh, punch this block. I don't think this round's gonna have any trouble getting through both of these blocks. These are 16 inch FBI spec. Let's, uh, let's run it and see what happens. In three, two, one. Oh yeah, I think we did some damage down there. Let's go take a look. All right, guys, well, that gives us a baseline there. That extreme penetrator, I mean, when you, when you hear the term tearing someone a new one, that's what that means. I mean, look, look at this gel. <laughs> it's split I mean, it right that. in half. Look at that. Okay, so awesome cavitation, excellent penetration. We saw that the round began to kind of lose stability, and then it kind of tumbled out with that first block. Oh, man, I mean, that, that temporary cavity, I mean, you're talking the size of a basketball. That's a pretty impressive result. We just want to show you guys quickly how that round works, what it looks like. This is what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Let's move on and shoot two more gel blocks with the control fracturing. I think that's gonna be very interesting. Let's do it. All right, guys, now we're gonna shoot the Underwood controlled fracturing 300 grain 458 SOCOM into two blocks of ballistic shell. Now, this round is designed to basically expand and then there's six pedals that will break off and create their own individual wound tracks. And then you've got a base that retains a good bit of weight still carrying on through and just punching through both of those blocks. We're gonna see if we can capture that base and see what happens. Check this out. In three, two, one. Oh yeah, that looked diabolical. Let's go check it out. All right, control fracturing. That's a very impressive round. I mean, you, you saw we've still got straight line penetration with the base carrying all the way through 32 inches of ballistics gel, and those six pedals breaking off, only one of them was actually captured in the block. You know, it, it's just crazy the amount of damage that these rounds can do. You know, I mean, each one of these pedals creating their own individual wound tracks, and both of these rounds, being 300 grains, are delivering over 2,200 foot-pounds of energy. Well, the interesting thing that, that I want to note here is the permanent cavity. Oh God. In the slow-mo footage, you can see the temporary cavity is very impressive no matter how you cut it. But man, that permanent cavity, even going on through with just that base carrying through, pretty scary. It is. So I'll uh, tell you what, guys, this gives you a really solid baseline for what both these rounds can do, but let's put into some real world tests. This is gonna be the fun part of the video. Let's get to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's do it. All right, guys, I know what you're thinking. What is that crazy contraption down there? That is our soda baffle. It holds 10 two-liter sodas. And you know, we, uh, we don't like our high fructose uh, syrup around here, so we're gonna take the extreme penetrator and see what will happen with 40 inches of soda, since ballistic gel is so expensive. Let's take a shot at it. In three, two, one. All right, let's go and see what happens. That was pretty cool. 
Yeah, it was, man. That came together nice. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No way. So it, the eighth bottle caught the projectile. So let's have a look. Perfect little projectile. There it is. Well, you know, you could probably just about reload that. You certainly could. It. Well, I'll tell you what, that, that's pretty impressive. Let's fix our rig back up. Let's see how the control fracturing does. Sounds good. All right, guys, the shot with the XP was pretty impressive. We're gonna run the CF now, the control fracturing, and see if we get a similar result. Let's do it. In three, two, one. Good Lord. Let's go take a look. I'm experiencing deja vu. Yeah, th somehow this is deja vu. In fact, it pierced the same exact amount of soda bottles. So the pedals broke off, caused a wicked amount of damage, and that base carried through. And I'd venture to say that that bad boy weighs about 200 grains plus. So that's pretty wicked. The fact that you can get that base carrying through doing its job, the pedals causing a wicked amount of damage, that is pretty dang impressive. Cool. Yep. Two subtle bottles to spare. I'm sure we can think about spare. something to do with those later. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Well, I want to see the extreme penetrator go up against some hard objects. Let's put the name to the test. So I think we got some baffle boards, some cinder blocks. Let's some real world scenarios yeah, as well. Let's have a look. Right. That was fun, but let's move on. All right, guys, those two shots with the soda bottles were so impressive. We're going to try something else. Eric had the idea to try to just shoot the caps off, see if we can get like some of the Mentos kind of uh, geysers going on. Uh, let's see what happens. I don't know if I'll be able to make the shot or not, but we're going to try it out and see. Running the uh, XP, the Extreme Penetrator. Here we go. All right, guys, the soda cap shot was pretty cool. That was something there just came up with off the fly. Try to shoot the cap off and get some geysers going on. Pretty neat slow motion there. But uh, Eric did say we're gonna move on to some harder targets. We've got several concrete blocks, inch and a half thick, set up here in a little baffle system. We're gonna see how many blocks the extreme penetrator will punch through. Some of us are saying two stop at three. Some are saying it'll go through three. Some are saying it'll go through four. Well, let's uh, put it to the test, see what we're working with here. All righty. In three, two, one. All right, that looked pretty impressive. Let's go see what the damage was. All right, guys, so we went through two blocks, stopped at number three. So broke block number one, went through, Broke block number two. Block number three is unscathed. So you see in the slow motion there that that thing just has a lot of penetrating power. Concrete is no slouch. What we're gonna do is put a soft target in between two concrete blocks, see if we can go through one block, through a soft target, and then out the other block. Let's try it. All right, guys, I mentioned a soft target. We got a watermelon sandwiched in between two concrete blocks. Let's see if the XP will get through there, destroy our watermelon and maybe punch out the other side. Let's see what happens. In three, two, one. Oh, beautiful. Well, that was pretty dang impressive. It's pretty crazy. I mean, you know, you got, you got an inch and a half concrete block as a barrier here, punched a hole clean through the middle of the thing. And then you've got all that material that's basically creating its own individual little projectiles. You know, just tore the crap out of that watermelon, the round carried all the way through, bounced off the block, and then wound up back here on the table. And uh, got a little bit of expansion on that thing coming through that block. That is a solid projectile. Yeah, I'll tell you what, as impressive as that was, I want to try the uh, control fracturing in the same test. Be pretty cool. Let's see if it, uh, if it fills up with concrete and actually gets on through there and does its job. I want to really see what those wound channels are doing, and I also want to see if the, if the nose on that thing is going to clog up with material. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Let's check it out. All right, guys, so that shot with the watermelon between the two blocks is pretty impressive. We've got a uh, remnant piece of ballistic shell from the earlier test that wasn't damaged very much. We've stuck it in between the two blocks. We're gonna try the CF out to see if the round gets clogged up in there. You know, if it, if it clogs up and it just keeps on penetrating straight through, that's still a win. But if it does its job, it's going to be very, very impressive. Let's try it out and see what happens. 
in three, two, one. All right, let's go see what happened. All right, so the way this shot came together is going to depend on how the projectile looks. It is. Let's All cut right, that thing out of there. Let me get out of the way here. Oh, man, look at that, like, concrete butthole. Let's see what we got. Oh, man. So it, okay, so what happens is it closed up, and it actually expanded a little bit, which is crazy. Because, guys, remember, this is a uh, brass projectile. It did. It closed up a little bit, but there was still one pedal that broke off. So there's one pedal that's missing there, at least, that we, you know, that we saw in the gel there. But that thing just punched on through that block and still dumped enough energy to leave a very, very nasty permanent cavity. What gets me is the way that that concrete carried through the wound. Interesting thing is, guys, this projectile is designed to break pedals off, cause tons of damage, and then have that base that punches on through. Uh, we found that when it hit a hard barrier, it acted like a full metal jacket or like a, a round, like, like an extreme penetrator like an in XP. a way. Yeah. So that's a pretty interesting result. Not quite what we were looking for, but still interesting. Um, concrete looking pretty cool. Let's have some fun with the control fracture. I want to have some watermelons with that, I think. All right. All right, guys, we're going to have a little bit of fun with the CF, the control fracturing. We've got a uh, couple of watermelons and a bunch of soda bottles and a couple of watermelons flanking here. And the idea behind that is so maybe the side watermelons will catch the uh, petals coming off of the round and then the other watermelon and the sodas to catch the base. So let's see if we can capture all the parts of this projectile and just see what happens. It's always fun blowing up watermelons. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Oh, good gracious. That was impressive. Let's go see the damage. All right, guys. Well, CF was pretty impressive in the watermelons. We didn't really get the uh, extreme spread like we were expecting. You know, the two watermelons that were flanking the side here, unscathed pretty much. But we did find a couple of the petals that broke off. And, uh, you know, a few of the sodas got, got waxed. But check this out. Look at this. It just turned this watermelon into just ground hamburger meat, basically. I mean, look at that. You're going to have a pretty bad day if that thing hits you. All right, guys, well, that watermelon shot was pretty cool. You saw how the, uh, the round went in and expanded out, and the petals created all kinds of crazy havoc. But what I want to show you in this shot is just how little material is needed to get the CF round to activate. We've got a two and a half inch thick water bottle downrange and a piece of plywood behind it. Check this out. In three, two, one. All right, guys, so we're moving on with another baffle test with the extreme penetrator this time. The CF was pretty impressive in that last shot. Just amazing how little material it takes to get that round to perform as intended. But we've got seven pine baffle boards, three quarter of an inch thick sheets of plywood stacked in there, a little bit of space in between them. We're gonna see just as a baseline how many of those this extreme penetrator will just punch right on through. Let's do it. Three, two, one. All right, guys, in the last shot, you saw that that extreme penetrator just punched all the way through all those pine baffles. So I don't think there's any, uh, any question to the penetrating capabilities of this thing. So we've set the baffles up again, and we've put two FBI standard ballistic shell blocks in the back. Let's see what kind of energy this thing retains after carrying through seven three-quarter inch thick pieces of plywood. I'm really interested to see what happens here. In three, two, one. All right, so that was pretty dang impressive. Yeah, you got your uh, seven baffle boards, all right, and then it continued on and penetrated pretty much through an entire gel block. Yeah. It did skewer out the top. 14 a and a half inches, and it, it just kind of skewered up and popped out of the block. And if it would have kept on going, it most likely would have gone through this block as well. I mean, look at all the wood fragments it carried through. I mean, that's a really nasty wound. Well, and what's crazy too is, look at that. God, it, it goes through all this barrier and it still has the energy of like a hollow point, like a defensive round when it punches through all the stuff. I mean, good Lord, man. Well, from, from a standpoint of, let's just say military applications, personal defense, there's times where you want a bullet to go through your house. There's times when you don't. But if you do need to shoot through a house, 
this is what you need. Shoot, I mean, if you need this, to shoot through the whole neighborhood, man. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but that, that round is pretty wicked. Wow. And I'll tell you what, let's wrap up with one last thing. We got one gel block left, a couple other little odds and ends. So we're talking about shooting through the house, shooting through a home. Let's do that. All right, guys, well, Eric mentioned shooting through an entire house. We have an entire house set up right here. We've got a front door, a watermelon, drywall, ballistic shell on the other side. This extreme penetrator has really been showing us true colors today, just mowing through anything and everything we can put, pretty much put in front of it. But we want to show you guys why it's always good to be mindful of what's downrange beyond your target, especially with this ammo. Like we said, certain ammo has certain capabilities and intentions of use. Let's see what happens. All right, guys. Well, that last shot was pretty dang cool. You know, Chad got a nice shot on the wall, nice group there. Everything passed through like it needed to. It's pretty clear as to why you need to know what's down range because projectiles, especially something like that extreme penetrator, is such an efficient projectile design that it really just gets through there and does whatever it wants. Uh, we showed today that the control factoring has certainly some good applications for hunting, uh, also for defense use. Oh yeah. The extreme penetrator has its hunting purposes, defensive use. Both rounds would certainly fill that niche quite well. Oh yeah. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more about Underwood Ammo, check the description box below for more information. Also, there's a link below for Lehigh if you want to check them out. Um, they're the people that made the projectiles that go into this ammunition. Pretty good stuff. It all ran well, very accurate. Oh yeah, the little gun ran exceptionally well today. Didn't have a single hiccup out of that. Muzzle brake did its job, keeping the, uh, keeping the shots very controlled. That extreme penetrator just blew apart our baffle system here. Yeah. And we actually had a lone watermelon down range about 20 yards away. He was gone. He just, yeah. he, he took it like a champ. You Absolutely. Know? Guys, uh, we, we really try to have fun making these videos. We really appreciate all the support that we get from you all. Um, is there something that we didn't do in this video that we should have? Is there a target that we missed? Is there a caliber that you want to see us do? Let us know and we'll try to accommodate it. Well, so, I didn't miss anything today. You didn't miss anything, but anyway. Guys, we appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. Have a good one. Take it easy, guys.